Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, is that you? It's me, Mama. How did you get back? I thought you'd call for Fritz to pick you up in the, in the truck. Uh, there's a taxi right in front of the hospital. I, I was going to take it only as far as the bus stand, but before I knew it, I, I was home. Such a nice taxi driver. Tell me about his wife and his brother. He'd been in a car accident once, too, and he was laid up for three months. Oh, David isn't going to be laid up for three months, and you know it. Of course he isn't. Come inside. I have some hot tea waiting for you. Well, I'm fine, Mom. I don't need any hot tea. You drink it. It's raw out, isn't it? Is it? I like it better out than in. The house feels so empty. Flatterer. Be careful, Claudia. Don't sit on my knitting. I see it. Oh, it's funny how a house can just change with the way a person feels. Yesterday morning it was pouring in, and yet it was so cozy and cheerful. David and I thought there wasn't a happier house in the whole world. There isn't. And the accident, and now it's empty. It usually is. David never comes home before 6.30 or 7. It's only 4 o'clock now. Hmm. It's knowing he isn't coming home. Not tonight, but soon. Could be worse. Of course it could. How's Bobby? Fine. He took his orange juice like a man. Babies go right on as if nothing happened. I think I'll go up and see him. He'll make everything seem normal. Sit where you are. You haven't told me about David yet. Oh, well, I saw him. I wasn't... A, I was allowed in his room for 15 minutes. He sort of was dozing most of the time. Was he able to speak? Mm, a little. He apologized for being such a dope as to let another car hit him. I tried to make a joke. That's all. I suppose they're keeping him half under. He'll be better tomorrow. Of course he will. Said he was doped off his headaches. That's the concussion. I never saw David look the way he looked. Terrible for a man. Somehow they're not built to lie still in a hospital bed. Oh, he'll be up and around and home before you know it. I'll know it all right. Anyway, Mama, there's no need going around being so gloomy. Who's gloomy? I am, like a clock. I keep telling myself how lucky we are. The important thing is that he's going to be all right. He hasn't lost an arm or a leg or... Anything important, he's just going to lose a little time, that's all. And, well, if I just can't get along without him for a couple of weeks, why, it's just too bad for me. You'll get along. Of course I will. I promised David I would, so I will. Well, now I guess I will have a cup of tea. Dr. Barry called while you were out. He did? He wanted to tell you it's all right to go over to the hospital and visit David, but you'd already gone. Oh, he says you're so wise, he's ready to turn the entire case over to you. <laughs> I keep my eye on David, but he better keep his eye on David's collarbone. I wouldn't know where to begin with a broken collarbone. He told me you're not supposed to begin with anything. David will just have to be quiet for a few weeks. Oh, he's going to love that. It's practically impossible to get David to take care of a cold, so can you imagine what it would be like to get him to take care of his collarbone? I dread the day he comes home to convalesce. I only wish it were tomorrow. Mm, I know what you mean. Time, time, time. What about it? I have so much of it all of a sudden. It keeps right on going. All we have to do is eat, sleep, eat, sleep. That's all. You're going to be wishing you had twice as much time running back and forth to the hospital? We have a nice long evening ahead of us, Mama. You and I. Just like old times before I was married better than old times. You forget I have acquired a grandson along the way. Did you ever thank me? What should I thank you for? For Bobby. I thanked David. He never told me. Lots of things I've told my son-in-law that he's never told you. I'll have to get after him. <laughs> you know, maybe this be a good time when he's flat on his back. <laughs> There's his pipe lying there in the ashtray. Just the way he left it. Evening papers all unread. He looked so strange, Mama, so pale against the pillow. 
Now, why don't you tell me to shut up? It wouldn't do any good. I told you many times, and it never did any good. Maybe I'll take up knitting. I think, Mama, now I know why you've knitted all these years. To keep you in sweaters and socks. <laughs> then to keep your husband in socks, and now to keep my grandson decently clothed. Three days ago, I would have believed you, but I know better now. Well, if you're so smart. Knitting is for women who wait. Keeps their hands busy so their hearts keep still. For a woman who's done so little waiting, you seem to know a good deal of it. I learn fast. I learn so fast, I'm starting to appreciate you, Mama. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> you never did thank me for all those sweaters I knitted you. Nor for all those years you waited. Oh, don't make my life sound so tragic, Claudia. It's been a very full one. Not because of life, but because of you. I wish I were more like you. I'd be absolutely useless without David. Good for nothing. All I could think about would be not having him. I'd never be able to, to make up my mind about anything. <laughs> women aren't like that. I hope you'll never have to find out, but women aren't like that. Mrs. Norton. Fritz, come in. Do I disturb you? No, of course not. I don't have a thing in the world to do except I want to go up and see the baby. Uh, Bertha has just gone up to bathe him. How is Mr. Norton? He's going to be all right, Fritz. I saw him. Yes, I know. It's going to be a little while, but he will be all right. He didn't seem to be too uncomfortable, just sort of sleepy. He wanted to know how everything on the farm was, and he sent you his regards. You tell him we miss him. He knows. Well, the important thing is he'll be well soon. Yes. In a week, maybe, when he's stronger... Uh, Bertha and I, if you don't mind, we go to visit him. He'd love it, just as soon as it's possible. I'll, I'll tell you. Good. Uh, Mrs. Norton, I know you have much to worry about. Not at all. The worry is all over. But uh, there are a few things that we should talk over. Yes? Mr. Norton will be away a little while yet. He ought to be home in about two weeks. He'll be laid up after that, probably, but he'll be home. And there's the expense. It costs so much to be sick these well, days. Well, we don't have to worry about that, thank goodness. There's a thousand-dollar bonus David got last week. Wasn't it lucky, Mama? I just didn't happen to spend it yet. You couldn't spend a thousand dollars in a week if you tried. Oh, I'll bet you I could. <laughs> but I'm not going to try it just yet. Well, anyway, that ought to cover everything beautifully, Fritz. It's one silver lining, isn't it? Still, sickness costs money. I know, and so I was wondering if you think we should go ahead with the work on the barn. Well, I, I don't know exactly what you and David had planned. Well, we were building a new section. Mm -hmm. The old part of the barn is in very bad condition. Yes. Uh, we are building a, a new small part, very modern, with all the necessaries to have a cow and equipment. I see. And the workmen, they are supposed to come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that is why I speak to you now, I, I do not like to bring you more problems than you already have. Don't apologize, Fritz. I could telephone them and tell them not to come if you think so. It was, um, it was quite a feat getting him in the, in the first place, wasn't it? Yes, labor is difficult to arrange for these days. I know. And we have been trying to get the workmen for weeks already. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to come tomorrow. Not supposed to come. They come. Mm -hmm. I telephone them and make sure this afternoon. And then I think to myself... Is it good to go ahead? And I say I better ask Mrs. Norton. I see. It costs money. Soon it will be winter, but we could postpone it until the spring. Well, Fritz, uh, do you know exactly what they're supposed to do? I have the plans Mr. Norton made. They are very clear. Oh, how oh, David would love to be able to supervise it himself. Certainly had his heart set on this barn. I think the only competition you'll ever have to be jealous of, Claudia, is a cow. I don't blame David, Mama. They had such soulful brown eyes. Well, Fritz, I, I wish I knew what to tell you. Well, I'd better call if we decide no. I'm sorry. Please stop apologizing. It's not your fault that I'm taking such a long time making up my mind. It's, it's a new part to play. <laughs> How long do you think this work will last? Uh, several weeks, at least, but it is not the time so much. It is the expense, particularly mm, now. I know. I'm just trying to think what David would do if he were here. If he were here, this wouldn't have become a problem. I'm so used to sort of letting him decide all the important things. Well, I guess I have decided. I'm sort of a little embarrassed to, 
To tell you what I've decided. Whatever you say, Mrs. Norton, you know best. I hope so. Well, I think we should go right ahead. Mr. Norton's had his heart set on this for a long time, and he'll have it. We'll manage somehow. If you feel the workmen can go ahead with the plans David's drawn up and that this is the best time of the year to do it, I think we better just go ahead, Fritz, and keep our fingers crossed. Uh, my daughter's never heard of the word caution. Oh, don't think I'm not quaking in my boots. Mrs. Norton, I think you're very wise. You do, Fritz? Yes. Caution is fine, but trust is better. Also, hoping the barn will be a beautiful surprise for Mr. Norton. Yes. You and I, we will watch it grow for him. But I go now and telephone those workmen. If they do not arrive right on the nose of the hour tomorrow, I will tell them what's what. And I bet you will. And you bet right. You're looking awfully sober, Mrs. Brown. Just thinking. Mama, did I do the right thing? So difficult deciding without David. If you had decided not to go ahead with the work, then you would have decided without David. This way, I think you decided very wisely. I'm impressed, even. What's there to be impressed about? I wonder if it's brains or instinct. Brains or instinct what? No matter how dumb you pretend to be, you always end up doing the right thing. I don't pretend to be dumb. I'd rather think you pretend. But, Claudia, for once, you decided the right thing. Yes, I think I did. You see, I don't want David to feel that without him things stop, or, or even that I stop. Bad enough is being sick and feeling useless and helpless, but I want him to know that the things he wants will still be. And I'm going to go right on, Mama, right on the way David and I would have together because we're going to be together again soon and independent. If I'm strong now, he'll be proud of me and it'll be better than ever. Say, Mama, I have to stop acting as if I'm a widow. It's, it's, it's crazy. The taste of it never hurt a wife. That's what I am. David's wife. Hey, I'm his son's mother, too. Do you realize I've been home 15 minutes and I haven't kissed Bobby on the brow yet? Mom, are you coming up? Careful, Claudia, careful of the stairs. One member of the family isn't in the hospitals enough. Careful of the stairs, do you hear me? Oh, that child. If you're planning a party, whether it's a big formal affair or the most casual sort of get-together, there's one thing that's bound to go on the list of refreshments, and that's ice-cold Coca-Cola. Coke is served at the most elaborate debutante parties. It's enjoyed equally well wherever people sit down to chat or play games in city, town, or country home. For everyone, everywhere, welcomes the pause that refreshes. Oh, Mr. King, just a moment before you go on. Yes, Mrs. Brown? It's good to get a man's opinion when the man of the house isn't home. Do you think Claudia decided right about the barn? Mm, I certainly do. Life does go on, accidents or no, and the more it can stay on norm, the better. Claudia will manage, and David will love her for it. That's the way I felt. But men, they're liable to feel different. Not so different. Say, Mrs. Brown, Claudia must be very lonesome, isn't she? Like a lost puppy. Well, tomorrow we'll see her with David again when she visits him at the hospital. It'll be like old times. See you then. Right. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>